Yes, mom. I am packing my stuff. Once I will be done sending it home, I too will come back. You chat it with your mother. Stuff in your books in a curtain alongside. How long will you make us wait? Even your brother is eager to meet you. You chuckled and shook your head. Come on, mom. His excitement is not because of me. It's because of his wedding. He is over the moon because he is getting married to his childhood love. You purposely teased because you knew your brother was listening. You heard some shuffling from the other end, and the next moment you heard your brother's voice. I would appreciate if you continue your mischief here at our home. And you are right. I am excited for for my wedding, but I am equally excited for your arrival. Sugar coated much. Leaving whatever task you were doing, you slumped down on the bed. As your back touched the warm and cozy surface of the mattress, a sigh involuntarily escaped your lips. You heard the sound of his deep breath. You could already picture him shaking his head in helplessness. Whatever. A smile broke out on your lips when you heard the faint sound of your mother's laughter in the background, followed by your brother's whine. Listen here, Miss Independent. Leave a text before boarding the plane. I'll come to pick you up. There's no need, brother. I can, I know you can take a cab or whatever. But there's no needs and wants in a family. There's care and affection, and I care for you. Also, I'm your elder brother. Do listen to me. His words sealed your lips for further argument. You sighed in defeat and nodded, forgetting he couldn't see you. Just nodding your head won't do. Oblige to what I am saying. Okay, Miss Independent. Fine. You let out a yawn and turned on your side, leaving your phone on your ear. You blinked your eyes, controlling yourself from dozing off. Okay, I'm hanging up. Take care. When are you sure you will manage all by yourself? He had been asking the same thing time and again since the day you announced about shifting back to your home. You could only manage to let out a soft hum as you were already at the verge of falling asleep. You heard a beep sound insinuating he had hung up. You had no energy to even put the phone away. You had been packing throughout the night, thus you were dead tired and as soon as your exhausted body met the mattress, your senses shut down almost instantly. Letting out a wince, you straightened up and stretched your body. Your tense muscles made a crack sound at the stretch. Placing your hands on your hip joint, you scanned the room. It looked empty yet full, full of memories. The memories of late night study sessions, movie marathons with friends, video calls with family and the list goes on. You still remember the first day you stepped inside the apartment. Every nook and corner of it carried countless memories. The four concrete walls witnessed your journey from being a scholar to being a doctor. Yeah, a long journey awaited ahead, but as you graduated from a medical school, you deserved to designate yourself as a doctor. Only if I could, I would have packed my apartment and took it with me. Sadly, I can't. You chuckled at your own silly thoughts and scanned the room with keen eyes. Almost all of your stuff was packed and shipped to your hometown except your wardrobe which you would be loading in a luggage. Let's get to work, fine. You have to leave tomorrow. You increase yourself to pack, though every fiber of your being screamed to hit the pack. However, your excitement of returning home kept you recharged and energized enough to work. You laid a big luggage on the floor beside your wardrobe and started organizing your clothes in it. Halfway to your packing, your hands halted midway as a small tin box came in your line of vision. A lump formed in your throat as you remember the most beautiful yet overwhelming moments of your life. With trembling hands, you brought out the box and sat it down on the floor. Dusting off the thin layer of dust covering it, you slowly opened the box. Your eyes shone with tears when your gaze fell on the first photo in it. It was a small Polaroid stamp on of your very first date with your first love, Park Chaman. You and he were smiling ear to ear, your hair flowing along with the wind. It was a beach date. 
You remember every second of it. As the memories came flooding back, you felt yourself going back to that time. The memories felt too real. As you could hear the sound of sea waves striking against the shore, the soothing warmth of the sun overhead and him. So we are having our first date on a beach. You asked as you took a seat on the sand. The view looked enchanting, eye captivating in such a way that it felt like a crime to look at somewhere else. Well, initially I had planned an extra vegan date in an expensive restaurant, then movies and many more. I had searched a lot but then he paused, prompting your attention on himself. He gave you a warm smile and continued. Then I remember you like two things. First is peace, and what could be more serene than a beach? So here we are. He shrugged his shoulders, taking out a few packets of your favorite snacks. You snatched those from him before he could pass it to you. You said, I like two things. What is the other one? You asked, opening the first packet to satiate your craving. The other one? He hummed and leaned back, admiring you while you eat. The other one and the foremost is me. Your hands halted midway as you looked at him looking at you with mischievous eyes. You seem so confident about it. Confident? I can prove it to you. Your eyes twist together. Your face gave away a disapproving look. You raised your eyebrows. When you observed his lips twisting into an impish smirk, he shifted closer, prompting you to lean back. His face hovered above yours, lips just a whisper away to meet yours. Your eyes shut close when you felt his hot breeze fanning against the space between your nose and upper lip. You thought you would lose your first kiss. But, much to your disappointment, he left a pack on your nose and sat back on his previous spot. Your eyes snapped open. You gaze searching for his. As your disappointed eyes met his mischievous ones, you squinted your eyes at him. What was that? My proof. Proof? How does it prove that you are the one I like the most? You huffed in irritation when his smile widened into a playful grin. The redness on your cheeks is the proof. You can't blush for someone you don't like. That's when you notice the warmness on your cheeks. Cradled your face between your palms and shook your head. I'm not blushing. Yeah, yeah, and I'm the member of famous boy band. He remarked, rolling his eyes. A serene silence settled in between as you both stated the view ahead. The sound of sea waves and the soft hum of air filled the space. It was all silent until you heard a click. Turning your head sideways, you found him taking picture of you with his Polaroid camera. Smile, your lips stretched on their own at his demand, and he continued capturing your pictures. You watched as he admired each and every snap with sparkling eyes. Give it to me, let me click your pictures. As you stretched your hand to take the camera, he grabbed your wrist and pulled you in his arms. A surprised gasp escaped your lips, eyes blinking continuously as you slowly grasped the situation. You looked up at him, looking at you with a smile. Smile. Your lips curved into a sheep smile and he clicked the picture instantly, creating yet another unforgettable memory. You smiled and wiped your tears which slipped down your eyes. Ramazing through the bog, you found more slips, memories frozen in time. They were of your dates, college fest, and many more. Every picture had German in them. Sometimes I think, what if we never broke up? How our life would be? You sighed and stared at his smiling face. Cleaning the box, you put it inside your luggage. Continue your packing, your mind preoccupied with numerous beautiful memories, German occupying the topmost position. You looked around, searching for your brother. A smile made its way to your lips when you noticed him. You waved your hand excitedly and rushed towards him, leaving your luggage there. 
The smile is spread his arms to hug you, but his smile disappeared when you run past him and hug the person standing behind him. Oh my goodness, how are you my bestie? Or should I say my sister-in-law? You tightened the hug and she too held you more tightly. Your brother looked at you with dumbfounded face as you both jumped like bunnies, holding each other so tight as though it had your lifeline. Parting away from the hug, you grinned at her. Young Sami on her way to become Sami. You wriggled your eyebrows teasingly to where she rolled her eyes, though her smile betrayed her annoyed expressions. Why do I feel like a third wheel? You mumbled, gaining your attention. When you both were busy squeezing life out of each other, you brought your luggage and put it inside the car trunk. You giggled and threw yourself in his arms. He smiled and engulfed you in his embrace. You sighed as you let yourself lose in your safe place. After your father's demise, he fulfilled the responsibilities of both father and brother. Thus, respect him alone, but still, never backed off from fulfilling your siblings' duties. Four years, Wayne. You haven't been home since four years, not even in your vacations. Didn't you miss us? You swallowed and parted away from his embrace. I did. I missed you all very much, but what could I do? I was passionate to fulfill father's dream. This is the only and foremost thing in my mind at the time. He smiled and left a chastity kiss on your forehead. Look here, brother. Your Miss Independent is Miss Doctor now. Can you see the glow of success on my face? Cradle your face in your palms and batted your eyelashes. He chuckled and flicked your forehead. Dramatic. Let's go home. Mother is waiting for you. Nodded and hopped on the passenger seat. Sami occupied the driver's seat while Lamton quietly got on the back seat. Oh God, when? When will you get ready? Guests would start arriving in a few minutes and you are still in your pajamas. He looked at your attire and sighed. Indeed, you were in your matching set pajamas. Mom, I'm not the one to be blamed. It is your stupid son and his also lovely fiancé. They didn't plan anything for their wedding and left everything on me. And here I am struggling in making their wedding memorable. He flung your nose in distress and took a seat on the nearby table. Your mother stepped towards him and kissed your head. Oh, then they deserve a good scolding for troubling my daughter, no? You puckered your lips and hugged her while her waist. Yes, they do, but let them be. It, it's the wedding today. Let them enjoy. You sighed and closed your eyes as your mother threaded her finger through your hair. No luxury of words. Can't compete against the peace a mother's embrace provides. Get ready, sweetheart. I don't want people gossiping that the groom's sister looks homeless. Mom, you whine, earning a chuckle from her. You just disappeared, Wayne. Don't you miss your family? Or you have someone there? Is it about a boy? You forced out a smile, clenching your fist at their sides. Oblying to your mother's request, you reluctantly met your relatives and family friends as you hadn't met them for years. But it wasn't going well so far. There were only few people who actually met you without the intention to peek in your personal life. However, most of them were like the one you were talking to, noisy and judgmental. Though they contribute nothing in your life, yet they want to know everything about it, and that too, with the fact that they care, but the reality is, they need something to gossip about, and if you dare to cross their words and introduce a word called privacy, they would straight up attack on your upbringing or worse, question your character. If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. Auntie, I disappeared because I was changing my dream. And see, I'm a doctor today. By the way, what is your son doing nowadays? He gave her an extra sweet smile which was anything but sweet. She fell silent at the mention of her son. Oh, I have to meet her, I am coming. She ran away from there as if her tail was on fire. 
roll your eyes and turn around to find your mother standing at some distance by the look of her face it appeared she heard everything mom if anyone says anything like this to you don't back off from giving a correct reply you don't owe anyone anything okay you smiled and hugged her sideways don't worry you didn't teach us to misbehave with people i know my boundaries and about replying i am good with words she smiled and patted your head but still i wish i was like brother he is so calm and mature i don't know how he handles everything skillfully he is the best praising him was something you would never do that in front of him mom i think it's your fault maybe you missed something when you were pregnant with me that made me like this and not like brother she looked at you with a face that reflected disappointment but not shock as though she had expected it coming before she could retort back the mc announced the bride and groom's entry your eyes widened in pure delight and you dragged your mother to your table the music started playing in the background and soon after the main characters of the day entered in the hall the ambiance became lively as applause and cheers fell the air making their grand entry even more extravagant you couldn't hold your excitement and ended up wrestling for your two favorite persons prompting loud laughter from the people around you amidst all the chaos your movements ceased completely when your eyes met the family of ones your smile slowly disappeared and a pained expression crossed your face jemin his name rolled off your tongue smoothly you were in utter shock but he he looked calm rather anticipated as though he was waiting for that one eye contact throughout his life you didn't expect him to be there but why wouldn't he be in the wedding of his cousin he was close to sami and he being at the wedding shouldn't be a thing to be surprised at as the eye contact stretched further he smiled at you you tried to smile back but you forgot to suck that faking thing tearing your gaze away from him you pivoted your focus on the couple taking vows of eternity you blinked back your tears and realized the precious moment of your brother's life with a soft smile mom no you shook your head vigorously as your mom hauled you out of the crowd and pushed you in between the other unmarried girls sami was asked to throw the bouquet according to the rituals but she being the loyal best friend asked you to join the circle sami i swear if you threw it at me you threatened her with your big eyes but she shrugged it off i can't even see where you are standing besides i can't play against destiny she turned around and threw the bouquet over her head you closed your eyes and it was flung in the air and much to your disappointment directly landed in your hands you heard loud applause from the guests you open your eyes you gaze instinctively more towards him as if they had brain of their own as expected his eyes were already at you throughout the evening whenever your gaze fell on him you found him already looking at you or who knows he never looked away down the words the conversation eyes do something hard to understand and beautiful to read the intimacy eye contact hold is something far from the physical connection something soulful and divine now it's your turn to get hissed she clapped her hands in excitement you squinted your eyes at her hissed to whom this bouquet or a monkey i didn't know you have different desires regarding marriage let's wait for a few years the science is progressing Maybe you can get married to a monkey in future. You scoffed and thus believed and threw blows at her, but she remained unbothered. I am going. Going where? The wedding is not over yet. I know. I am going to explore the garden. I saw some beautiful plants there. You and your obsession with nature. She exclaimed, prompting a smile from you. This is the only way to keep connected with life. when people search for serenity in that i find peace in life 
the full moon shone overhead casting a soft milky glow throughout the land plants glowed under the moonlight flowers petal nestled together in a cozy manner as if cuddling each other to sleep all the trees plants or animals seemed to have their peaceful sleep the moon being their guardian protecting them under till the sun arrived to resume his duty amidst all the beautiful creation of nature a human brain marvelous thing stood tall in the center of the garden it was a fountain a beautiful one it looked more captivating at night water going up and then flowing down from its edge in a rhythmic manner you took a seat on the bench placed near it and closed your eyes the gentle breeze the peaceful moon the serene ambiance was what you needed at that moment however despite all this something felt missing or precisely someone you sighed as your thoughts drifted back to german hey your eyes snapped open and you turned your head to find german beside you you were so lost in your reverie that you didn't notice when he came and sat beside you i'm sorry i didn't mean to startle you your lips twisted into a sly smile no it's fine noticed him from close for the first time he had changed a lot his chubby cheeks were gone replaced by sharp and intact jawline he looked more manly and more mature but the things that didn't change were his adorable eyes and his unadulterated personality in the pretext of observing him you forgot you were staring for long until he cleared his throat pouring you out of your thoughts you flinched and looked away in mortification a sudden awkward silence settled in between as he was stared at everything except each other mentally weaving a few words to initiate a conversation i i didn't know conversing with a person would be so awkward especially when the person is someone i used to talk for hours he intervened the silence looking at you with a soft smile you looked down and gulped as you were barely holding yourself from breaking down how have you been jackal and looked at him the same i was 4 years ago no nope, you are not the same you have changed you have become a more a bit more mature a bit more successful a bit more beautiful but still the same silly wine he smiled eliciting a chuckle from you how have you been he said and reclined back on the bench i i changed a lot i learned a lot of things and still learning lost some things but found everything you couldn't decipher the emotions in his eyes as he spoke those words was staring at your eyes directly another moment of silence followed but unlike earlier this time you didn't look away have someone in your life you didn't know why you asked it but you regretted the next moment when you noticed him being caught off guard your heart broke into pieces when he nodded you could hear the pieces crashing against the floor oh that's good you managed to smile you could only picturize how fake would it look because the look jemen gave after that it was clear he understood your inner sentiments but i'm not sure if she feels the same or not huh what do you mean is that one sided you asked confused and laced your tone it was two sided but she left 4 years ago and i met her today so i don't know if she still feels the same or not he trailed off not wanting to even voice out the other possibility the lips parted as he observed the reality bit by bit and pieces by pieces he was talking about you you mean you me you pointed your index finger between him and yourself chuckled and nodded did you forget i said i'll wait for you and i did is it necessary why we could keep it long distance he asked desperation and pain evident in his tone you shook your head wiping your tears no i you are the most beautiful part of my life jemen and i want it to be like this i'm going away and i can't promise things would be same 
there would be times i would prioritize myself above anyone and i don't want you to feel low at that time i don't want you to feel unloved because you deserve much better than this i know i we would drift apart and ended up doing something wrong i don't want things between us turning ugly our relationship is much better than this though the decision pained you but you knew it was better off like this but but we can work out long distance i will handle everything i know i know you would do it but i i'm not sure about myself i don't want you to put single sided efforts and get hurt in the end so instead of leaving you hanging i'm freeing you you can live your life the way you want you can date anyone you want tomorrow is my flight please don't come to send me off I I won't be able to go. I shifted towards him and hugged him tightly while he sat numb on his phone. A heart clenched painfully, but you had to do this for yourself, for him. Parting away, you placed a long kiss on his forehead, relishing the moment as long as you could. You cradled his face in your palms and smiled at him. Goodbye, Jamin. Maybe we will meet again if destiny wants us to be together. saying so you packed on his chin lower lip and then upper lip as you pulled away he let out out a shaky breath without wasting any more moment he stood up and walked away from there because you didn't want to break down in front of him i i will wait for you you blinked your eyes when he felt your mouth soft touch on your cheek as he gently wiped your tears i i'm sorry i was selfish You shook his hand and clasped your hands on his. You were not. The thing you did needs a lot of courage. You did what you felt right and I did what I felt right. How can we name one thing selfish and another selfless? You just stared at his face, unable to form any word. The warmth of his palm around yours felt serene, like a warm blanket on a chilly night. So, found someone there? Chakra and shook your head. There was no one like you. Right. There's no one like me. I'm the one and only. Only yours. You flushed and looked away, avoiding his mischievous gaze. A moment of silence followed, both looking at the fountain ahead. Any plans of getting married? He asked, indirectly referring to the bookie incident. You passed your lips and shrugged your shoulders. Honestly, you didn't know what to say. Marriage was not even the last thing in your priority list. He opened his mouth to say something but halted midway when your phone pinged with a message. You unlocked your phone to find a text from your mother asking your presence for some urgent work. I need to go. Mom is calling me. You reluctantly retreated your hand from his grip. A feeling of emptiness washed over you almost instantly. He kept looking at you as you rose from your spot and made your way towards the entrance of the wedding hall. However, he stopped in your track when he called you. Listen, you turned around and raised your eyebrows, awaiting him to continue. Any plans of getting married to me? You bit back a smile and shrugged your shoulders. I don't know. You watched as he stood up facing you and crossed his arms against his chest. Tomorrow, at the same beach, I will wait for you with your favorite snacks. I would appreciate a yes or no instead of I don't know. If it's a yes, I'll be over the moon and if it's a no, I'll give you countless reasons to say yes. You stood there, too stunned to say anything. Your feet took you back to him. with rushed and heavy steps you gladly let yourself in his vicinity holding his collar you jogged him down to your face level and smashed your lips on his he followed your lead immediately as if he was waiting for that moment to happen pumped left his collar and traced a path from his shoulders to his knee while he snaked his arms around your waist the kiss continued for a small fraction of time because at the back of your head You remembered about your mother looking for you. Parting away, you breathed against his lips. Five packets and your handmade sandwich. 
show you grown in wildly as you didn't want to go away from him but the situation demanded otherwise retreating the steps you rushed inside without looking back Kim smiled and ruffled his hair I will wait for you 